Hello, Echo Sage here on the Sage channel today, and a few people have asked me to explain how you make an auto miner like Plutos, or even go over how Plutos is put together, really, since a lot of that I did while skipping ahead during the survival series. Now, so here we go. This is Plutos here. I've got two versions of it one here where I've cut open so I can easily show you the insides, and one here is a full normal version. Now, the cutaway here, we'll start at the back and work our way all the way to the front. Now, at the back, two very important things to note right away here is this thruster with no power and this thruster with no power. That's because those are important to actually driving the ship forward when it's doing its auto-working stuff. At the back here, though, we do have a large connector here, followed by a medium cargo crate. Above said medium cargo crate, you'll notice there's a pipe sticking right out of the top of it that's plugged into it, and it heads over here to this junction. Now, in the past, you were able to actually move stuff through this larger door here into the smaller door of a reactor, but unfortunately, you cannot move from a large door straight into a small one anymore, as far as I can tell. So that's why I have the pipe up there to sort of go around that, and then it merges back in. That way, everything can easily be put in through that back access port. You can put uranium in there, and also the stuff from these drills at the front will come back all the way to this point below that by the way we do have our antenna stuck right here in the middle nice and safe from everything you don't really have to worry about being sheared or destroyed or whatnot i'm going to remove these uh, thrusters right there so that you can see there are some more piping that goes straight through the middle of the ship nice and safe and then it reaches this point and at this point i'm just going to remove two lights you can see that the piping forks out and then connects into the back of each of these drills which is pretty simple and straightforward now i'm really going to, going to remove this drill and those two thrusters there that way you can see the center control area right here, which is pretty simple and straightforward in its own right. It's got a ore detector right there at the bottom. That way if I need to detect ores, I can. It's got its camera. It's got its remote control block right there at the front. And then it's got its sensors. This is basically the main control hub of the whole thing. And it's all pretty simple and straightforward. The only thing that's not right here is basically the antenna that's stuck way down there, which of course I probably would have stuck it here, but there wasn't really any room. Anyway, the way this sensor is set up to make this whole machine work is pretty straightforward. If I to actually go ahead and hop into it we're going to do two things first off on show on hud we're going to turn that on i'm going to go to the info tab and we're going to say show sensor fields that's the one i'm turning on and off right there and now if we back away even without creative mode you'll be able to see this as long as you have an antenna on your vehicle and now you'll be able to see that's what the sensor's detection field is. The second this detects an asteroid, it turns on a group. Within that group, we have all four drills that are usually here and those two thrusters I mentioned at the back that are turned off. So instantly it turns all of those on. The second that sensor no longer detects an asteroid within this large red area, it shuts itself off. It turns off those that group that has all that stuff in there. So instantly the drills and those two thrusters shut off. And really quickly, I'll actually show you what the sensor field says settings are if you'd like to see those so i'll pop in there you see that's very very simple it's basically a one in each direction two for the bottom two for the top because it's a slightly taller machine than it is wide and the back extent i have it pretty much the whole machine because i want it to get most of the way if not all the way out of the asteroid before actually shutting down and then the front extent is 12 that way if you aim it in the basic direction of an asteroid it'll see it and start going down towards it and of course i have it set to detect asteroids all the way down here at the bottom for its setup actions, you can see down here, I have it set to turn on a group and turn off a group. Not toggle on and off, not toggle on and off because you could run into trouble. It's straight turn on a group and turn off a group. And that group, of course, is the automine group I mentioned. And if I was to go ahead and actually find the automine group, you can see it's got those drills and those two thrusters I was talking about, which are automatically set to be off until, of course, that sensor detects it, turns them on. And then, of course, once the sensor no longer detects it, it turns that group off, as I said already. So let's go ahead and actually do this in a demonstration. So we have a Plutos right here. And you can actually see I have two of them showing up because I have both of the antennas set to be owned by me. By the way, they will not actually show up to you unless you have them set to be the antennas themselves set to be owned by you, and you have to be using an antenna that's owned by you if you're sitting in a station like this. Please note that it is important. So as you can see here, I have the antenna set and set the share with all, and at this pull down, I have the Plutos, and the only thing in here that's actually owned is just the antenna, and set to be owned by me and shared with all. And let's go ahead and use the control me group. So now we have control of that Plutos drone right over there to our right. I have at the bottom here a few keys to switch through everything. You'll see the camera overlay is my own custom one. 
that I have manually installed. It doesn't quite work. If you want to use this, it is on the Steam Workshop, but you'll have to download it from that and then manually install it. At the bottom though, carrying on, we have our two cameras, one forward, one backwards. And of course we could point this towards something and get it going. We also have our three button and our four button. Now our four button is basically that same group I talked about before, it just turns it on. Our three button turns on and off that sensor. That way if we want to maybe, let's say, manually start mining, we can just turn on that group. And then once we start mining, we could go ahead and turn that sensor back on. That way, the second it stops detecting an asteroid, it'll shut off again. Of course, we also have our seven button there if we just want to toggle on the drills. And then our six button if we want to manually left click and drill, just like you would on any normal mining drone. So really quickly, let's do an F7. We're going to do a K and we're going to go to our sensor. So sensor, oh, no, no. Sensor, there we go. We're going to say show on HUD and then info. We're also going to, of course, have our show sensor fields turned on here as well so you can see it. And I'm used F7 to get third person view, by the way, of a drone. And that's used as spectator mode. So you can see here we are sensor on and off. And we're just going to go up to it. And the second it sees that rock, boop. Those two thrusters at the back you can now see are at full bore, pushing this whole thing forward. And of course this drone is going to just keep on mining through now. And as we go, we'll actually end up clipping into the asteroid because we're in spectator mode. And you can see that it is just drilling its way through there, as it would. And this will just keep on going, like I said, until it reaches the other side. And why not? I'll go ahead and cut ahead right now until we reach that point where it's through the other side. That way you can see it shut off. And you can see here we're getting quite close to the other side. Actually, we've ended up where we can... Actually, yeah, we have to zoom in to be able to see because we're coming up to the outer wall of the asteroid. And you see there at the left, the sensor field is poking all the way through the asteroid now. But of course, because we have it going all the way back for most of the ship, it'll keep on going even far past its actual sensor point. So there we go. It's made its way out and then it'll push itself out a fair distance to where it's no longer detecting. There we go the asteroid and shut off. And at this point, if you're listening carefully, you might have heard the little click, so you'd be able to take manual control over it again and bring it back to your base, drop off the supplies, and then all you gotta do is aim it back at the asteroid. And the second it sees it, if we just get it close enough, there we go, it automatically starts going, and you can just go ahead and exit that, and it'll keep on mining right on its own. So anyway, that's that. That's how you make an automatic mining droid, and that is Plutos for you. Pretty nice little drone, pretty happy with it. And of course you see sensor forward or there because I had toggled that to show on HUD. And that usually wouldn't be there of course because I could select Plutos and tell that one little sensor to not be shown on HUD. There we go. So now it's just Plutos mining in his own business, slowly mining his way through the asteroid. And you see he makes these relatively straight, slightly odd tunnels. And remember, of course, if you're making a mining drone, they can be much larger than this. Just make sure you have your sensor field set up so that it's not going to snag on anything and you have all your groups correctly aligned. Anyways, that's it. That's it. That's it. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you guys next time.